huge in prophecy. It becomes very evident as one studies the basic literature of the New Age movement that its leadership proposes to implement all the systems of the Antichrist warned of in the Bible, particularly those presented in Revelation chapter 13. New Agers have publicly made their intent known to abolish cash money. They have said they propose to implement a more rational means of exchange, such as computerized barter system. Books by Buckminster Fuller clearly spell out an intent to give every world resident a number and require the usage of this number in all financial transactions of any sort, including minor purchases with a universal credit card. The movement has also been promoting the establishment of gigantic global agencies for controlling the distribution of food and other vital resources. The motivation behind this proposal may be gleaned from the fuller writings. In order to control the world, one must also control the world supply routes. The New Agers have stated that we will soon enjoy a new world order that will be a synthesis of the parliamentary commonwealth of nation system of Great Britain, the socialism of Russia, and the heterogeneous mixtures of the United States. Another goal of the hierarchy for this new world order is that of a unified Europe. This sounds strangely like the beast that came out of the water in Revelation 13. It had feet like a bear, Russia, spoke like a lion, Britain, and was like unto a leopard, the United States, and had ten horns and seven heads. As to the seven heads, the new world order will supposedly be one which the mysteries are restored. The, the seven past governments of which Rome was the sixth and Hitler Hay the seventh were all pagan mystery religion governments. In the book of Revelation, the government of the Antichrist is to be headed by the beast that was dead and came back to life. After extensive research, it is safe to say that the New Age movement is identical in both belief systems and cosmology to the Nazism of Hitler Hay, which I believe is the beast that was dead and came back to life. It is also interesting to note that Nazism was commonly referred to as the beast, and according to the Trevor Ravenscroft in The Spear of Destiny, Hitler Hay knowingly tried to invoke the spirit of the beast from the pit. Similarly, in this day and many in age in this day and age, many New Agers are deliberately trying to invoke a presence, the presence of Maitreya the Christ or an Antichrist. The October 1982 issue of the Reader's Digest carried a full-page, full-color copy of the Great Invocation, the New Age prayer to Maitreya the Christ to invoke his presence on earth. Benjamin Krebs has stated, as do the Alice Bailey writings, that the Great Invocation will be the New World prayer after the advent of Maitreya, whoever he is. And similar to Nazism, the New Agers, or top-level New Age esotericists, that is, do have a war plan for our future. The precise nature of this planned conflict may be gleaned from the Alice Bailey writings. Quote, Years ago, I said that the war which may follow this one would be waged in the field of the world religions. Such a war will not work out, however, in a similar period of external carnage and blood. It will be fought largely with mental weapons and in the world of thought. It will involve also the emotional realm from the standpoint of idealistic fanaticism. This inherent fanaticism found ever in reactionary groups will fight against the appearance of the coming world religion and the spread of esotericism. For this struggle, certain of the well-organized churches through their conservative elements, their most powerful elements, are already girding themselves. Fanaticism, entrenched theological positions, and materialistic selfishness are to be found act actively organized in the churches, in all continents and of all denominations. They can be expected to fight for their established ecclesiastical order, their material profit, and their temporal rule, and already are making the needed preparation. The coming struggle will emerge within the churches themselves. It will also be precipitated by the enlightened elements who exist in fair numbers already and are rapidly growing in strength through the impact of human necessity. 
The fight will then spread to thinking men and women everywhere who in a protesting revolt have denied Orthodox churchianity and theology. Wow. <clears throat> Pause. She's talking about a struggle emerging within the churches themselves. And I think that makes me remember, for instance, Rick Joyner in his book talking about a civil war in the church. There's a lot of talk about that. And the good guys are going to kill the bad guys. Anyway, on pause. The reason why Alice Bailey might have anticipated such trouble from the churches is found in page 544 of the same book. There she states the three planned activities of this new age Christ. Number one, the reorganization of the world religions, if in any way possible, so that their out-of-date theologies, their narrow-minded emphasis, and their ridiculous belief that they may know what is in the mind of God may be offset in order that the churches may eventually be their recipients of spiritual inspiration. Number two, the gradual dissolution, again, if in any way possible, of the Orthodox Jewish faith with its obsolete teaching, its separative emphasis, its hatred of the Gentiles, and its failure to recognize the Christ. In saying this, I do not fail to recognize those Jews throughout the world who acknowledge the evils and who are not orthodox in their thinking. Number three, preparation for a revelation which will inaugurate the new era and set the note for the new world religion. Another reason why she might have logically expected or orthodox religious opposition has to do with the economic system she proclaims will be set up by the so-called hierarchy. When the adjuster of finances, as an advanced disciple from this ashram is called in the hierarchy, appears, he will find conditions greatly changed from those now prevalent, and this to the following extent. The principle of barter and exchange to the benefit of all concerned will control Number two, owing to the development of atomic energy on behalf of human welfare, national currencies will have been largely superseded, not only by a system of barter, but by universal monetary exchange, representative of bartered goods, when they are relatively small and unimportant, and by a planned scale of related values. National material assets and the needed commodities will all be provided for under an entirely new system. Private enterprise will still exist, but will be regulated. The great public utilities, the major material resources, and sources of planetary wealth, iron, steel, oil, and wheat, for instance, will be owned in the first place by a governing, controlling international group. Hmm. They will, however, be prepared for international consumption by national groups chosen by the people and under international direction, unquote. If the foregoing sounds reminiscent to those who have had some exposure to biblical prophecy, it should. It is chillingly similar to Revelation 13, 16 through 17. And he causeth all, both great and small, great, small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. The New Agers even have a perspective on the War of Armageddon. However, their scenario differs from the biblical account. In reading the following passage, it should be kept in mind that Black Lodge, or Black Forces, means the religious Orthodox forces, whereas White Lodge, or White Forces, is used by the New Agers, to refer to themselves. The term black magician, as used in the following context, also refers to religious orthodoxy. Pause. White hats. Okay, anybody out there who knows anybody or who knows what that is pertaining to, the white hats, white lodge, white forces, white hats, are the occult. And the Black Lodge is Orthodox religion or Christianity. Oh, 
boy. <clears throat> okay, quote. This is from A Treatise on White Magic by Alice Bailey. You might well say here, we have also been taught that there exist those who work in the four ethers and who undoubtedly perform magical deeds, yet who do not possess this essential purity and loving kindness to which reference has been made. This is undoubtedly true. They belong to a group of workers in matter whom we call black magicians. They are highly developed intellectually and can motivate mental substance or mind stuff in such a manner that it can achieve objectivity on the physical plane and bring about their deep intent. About this group, there is much misunderstanding and profound ignorance. It is perhaps as well for their destiny is tied up with the future race, the sixth, and their end in the cessation of their activities will come in that far distant eon, which is technically called the sixth round. The final break or division between the so-called black and white forces for this particular world cycle will take place during the period of the sixth root race in the present round. Towards the close of the sixth root race, before the emergence of the seventh, we shall have the true Armageddon about which so much has been taught, a small cycle corresponding to this final battle and cleavage will appear during the sixth subrace, which is now in process of formation. The world war, which has just taken place and our present cycle of separativeness and upheaval, do not constitute the true Armageddon. The war which is told to us in the oh, Mahabharata and the present war had the roots of their trouble and the seeds of the disasters which they brought about one in the lower and one in the higher astral world. Unquote. They have spoken correctly by stating this would be a war as no other. The book of Revelation, however, claims that this final world battle will see Lucifer and his followers defeated by God himself. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. And he gathered them together in a place called in the Hebrew tongue or Armageddon. And I saw the beast, the Antichrist, and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him, Jesus Christ. They sat on the horse, that, that sat on the horse and against his army. And that's from Revelation 16 and 19 prophecy here is wisdom let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is six hundred three score and six the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws changed the ordinance and broken the everlasting covenant isaiah 24 5 and he that doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, Revelation 13, 13. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed revelation 13 14 and 15 and he and he causeth all both great small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name revelation 13 16 through 17 and i stood upon the sand of the sea and saw the beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. Revelation 13, 1 through 3. Number 7. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the others not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. 
Revelation 17, 10, and 11. Number 8. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. 1 Thessalonians 5, 3. Number 9. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, and 4. Number 10. Who is a liar? <clears throat> I'm sorry. Number 10. Who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. 1 John 2, 22. 11. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God, and this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. 1 John 4, 3. Number 12. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Revelation 9, 20 through 21. 13. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done. Daniel 11.36 Number 14. But in his estate he shall honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Daniel 11.38. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and that they shall be given unto his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Daniel 7.25. And now we have the New Age, or Creme Fulfillment. <clears throat> Number one, Alice Bailey on pages 79 and 80 of the Rays, of, uh, in the Rays and the Initiations calls 666 a sacred number and shows how they use occult numerology to calculate it. In the Treatise on Cosmic Fire on page 306, she said that 666, quote, holds the mystery <clears throat> hid of one of the three heavenly men, end quote. The Keys of Enoch, another New Age Bible, instructs the reader to use the numerical sequence 666 as frequently as possible. Use of the number is to attract higher intelligence from either another dimension or outer space to our planet. The New Age movement uses rainbows, the everlasting covenant pursuant to Genesis 9, 15-17, to signal their building of the rainbow bridge. Antka Karnana, sorry, which is the bridge between the personality, man, and the soul, Lucifer. I'm skipping that. That must be the note from the person who made the PDF. It says, Cumbie matches two scripture quotations from the book of Revelation, numbering three and four, to New Age creme fulfillment, to its number three only. Okay. Number three, the New Age movement has devoted a great deal of research and attention to the use of holographic images, three-dimensional images created by the use of laser beams. According to David Spangler, in a meeting in Southfield, Michigan on February 1, 1982, laser beam projectors have been installed for their use on the top of the Cathedral of St. John the Divine Episcopal in New York City. Lightning experts say these may be used to beam to be beamed on a satellite and coming back through the ionosphere. The light rays will be bent in such manner as to make it appear that actual flames are coming from the skies and to project a three-dimensional holographic image that could be viewed by us to one-third of the Earth's surface at any given time. Sound technology is available to make the image speak and in the language of areas beamed to. Benjamin Krem, David Spangler, Alice Bailey, Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, et al. 
have all said that initiation will be the heart and the and core of the new world religion david spangler has defined that initiation is a luciferic initiation and for those who cannot accept the new christ they will be sent to another dimension other than physical incarnation according to spangler krem says that cash will be abolished and the world will go to a more rational means of exchange such as a computerized barter economy hmm doesn't that sound kind of like crypto maybe Krem has said that the initiations will be given on a mass planetary basis in a revitalized Christian church and in the Masonic lodges and other esoteric organizations. Krem said there would be the sword of cleavage for all who would not go willingly into the future with this new, this so-called new Christ. Per Alice Bailey, in the rays and the initiations, etc., the New World Order will be a synthesis between the USSR, feet like a bear, Great Britain with its Commonwealth of Nations, spot like a lion, and the United States with its heterogeneous mixture of people, like unto a leopard. It will also feature a unified Europe. In the Aquarian Conspiracy by Marilyn Ferguson, she stated that Europe was eminently pre-suitable for launching the new political spiritual entity. Foster Bailey, husband of Alice Bailey, wrote in his book, Running God's Plan, copyright 1972, Lucius Trust, that one of the goals of their so-called hierarchy was to have a unified Europe and that a previous attempt had been made by a disciple using the Rhine River as a unifying factor. But that attempt was unsuccessful. The beast that was dead and came back to life is Nazism? Hitler Hay tried to unify Europe using the Rhine River as a unifying factor. Hitler Hay was also was into exactly the same brand of occultism as the New Age movement. Gnosticism and mysticism. The plans of Alice Bailey, which are followed with precision by the New Age movement, are identical to Nazism. The five preceding kings were all Babylonian philosophy empires based on the mystery traditions, which is also what occultism and the New Age movement are based upon. The sixth kingdom was obviously pagan Rome. Many Bible scholars have interpreted the Vatican as being the seventh, but I must reject that interpretation. However, the Vatican has seen occult infiltration, as have probably all other denominations of Christianity. As the Vatican continued longer, than the other six empires put together, and the Bible said a short space. Hitler Hay continued for a short space, also tried to make the old mystery teachings the state religions, was hostile to Orthodox Christianity and Judaism. The New Age goals and teachings from promotion of Arianism in a super race to use of swastikas are identical to Nazism. Although to be remembered is the fact that the Vatican never taught reincarnation. This is a new age or mystery teaching. It is much more probable that the interpretation is that of an identical government or political system to that of the seven all mystery teaching governments, including Hitler Hay. Number seven, the New World Order complete with the proposed nuclear freeze or disarmament campaign is laid out on pages 190 to 191 of the Externalization of the Hierarchy by Alice A. Bailey. On page 548 of the same book, she states that the nuclear bomb was a great advance for humanity, that their hierarchy helped develop it, working through the fifth ray or scientific workers. She went on to say that when they put the bomb into the hands of the United Nations, that it could be used or threatened to be used whenever aggression rears its ugly head, and that it did not matter whether that aggression came from nation states or from powerful religious groups, such as the Church of Rome, who did not know how to leave politics alone and attend to the business for which religious groups are responsible. Krem is a disciple of Alice A. Bailey, as is David Spangler, and in this and this is from the book Krem recommended in his bibliography to give more information on the New Christ. Also, there is extensive New Age literature on the use of atomic weapons.
Number eight, the secret doctrine of the New Age movement and of occultism includes a teaching that the Trinity, Trinity not to be confused with our Trinity, for they have a totally perverted... Darn it. Sorry. For they have totally perverted the persons and purpose of the triune Godhead. Okay, I'm sorry. I have to go back. The secret doctrine... I'm going to skip that part in the parentheses. The secret doctrine of the New Age movement and of occultism includes a teaching that the Trinity is inferior to something known as the Solar Logos. In Alice Bailey's books, The Initiations, Human and Solar, and A Treatise on Com Cosmic Fire, this organizational chart may be found and possibly in the Helena Petrovna Blavatsky books also. Benjamin Krem, as well as the rest of the New Age movement, with the exception of those who have not been initiated to this point, consistently deny that Jesus is the Christ, and they insist that Maitreya is the Christ, and Jesus is his disciple. This is a central point of the secret doctrine, as well as a teaching, a central teaching of unity and other New Age churches, that the Christ consciousness resides in each of us individually, doctrine of God imminent and there can be a Christ other than Jesus that Buddha was a Christ Krishna was a Christ etc the New Age movement people including Benjamin Krem and David Spangler as well as unity and many theologians who have infiltrated other denominations say that Jesus Christ did not come in the flesh that the Christ consciousness descended upon him at the time of his baptism and stayed with him until the time of his crucifixion more outrageously still, Krem said that Jesus did not earn the right to keep his resurrected body and that he is presently living in a 640-year-old Syrian body in the Himalayan mountains. I might actually add a clip here because this is one that I see a lot. And, um, for instance, Todd White almost said that exact thing about how the Holy Spirit came on Christ and whatever. Number 11. The New Age movement is both pantheistic worship of many gods and animistic worship of inanimate objects and of animal and plant life. They deify Lucifer and in fact David Spangler has said we must take a Luciferic initiation if we wish to enter the New Age alive. They have resurrected every pagan god that was ever worshipped and a variety of new ones as well. As far as sorceries are concerned, they are the modus operandi of the New Age movement, as much attention is given to psychic phenomena in consciousness raising. Number 12. Maitreya has claimed through transmissions from Benjamin Krem that Jesus is one of his disciples and that he is at the head of a hierarchy of gods or masters. In the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ, allegedly transcribed from the Octavius, Akashic Records by Levi, Leo Dowling, states on page 16 of the introduction by Eva Dowling that one may enter fully into the spirit of the God of force. The entire theme of occultism, Luciferianism, and cultism connected with the New Age movement is learning how to manipulate the force. New Agers do not believe in a personal transcendent God to whom we are all accountable. They believe that God is a neutral force which can be manipulated either for good or evil. According to Benjamin Krem, there will be the sword of cleavage for all who refuse to accept Maitreya the Christ. Alice Bailey said in her books that the next great war would be in the field of world religions. She stated that the three goals of the so-called new Christ included restructuring Christianity and abolishing Orthodox Judaism. Number 15. The New Agers, including Bailey, Krem, and David Spangler, have laid out plans consistent with what they call the Plan, the capital P Plan, which include abolishing traditional religious holidays and substituting New Age pagan festivals in their place. For example, they have said that Good Friday and Christmas will have to go. Okay. Wendy. The last comparison on this page provides two points, 14 and 15, in the New Age creme fulfillment as against number 15 in prophecy. 
I'll leave a link to the uh, PDF below if you want to figure that out. Thank you for listening. That was chapter six. Run. There's just one name that can keep you out of hell, and it's the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Jesus.